shooting. Mm -hmm. Are we live? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sprayers. Fun. So much to go over. This will be long. Hopefully not that long. Um, okay, so I'm going to walk you through pretty much how to set up a sprayer, how to kind of troubleshoot a sprayer, uh, the differences between them, what to use, when to use it, all that kind of fun stuff. So uh, more or less right here, what we have is a Graco sprayer. There's two kinds of sprayers. There's Graco uh, and then there's Titan, which is actually this one over here. Uh, generally Titans are red, Gracos are blue, pretty straightforward. I like Graco. Um, what I've heard is I think most of the parts on the Gracos are stainless steel, whereas on Titans they're aluminum, so they vary in price. There's a bunch of different models. This one that we have here is a 490. Um, there's a 390, there's a 395, 490, 495, 590, and, and so on. Um, the difference between them, uh, they do have a few features. This one has a bit of like a, a, a digital display in here that tells you how many gallons you've used. Um, some of them have different cleaning um, uh, kind of uh, parts to them that they can do, self-cleaning stuff. Some of the bigger models are on wheels. Some of the bigger models, you can put two guns on them. Uh, some of the bigger models, you can put two guns on them, both up to 300 feet of hose. Uh, which is pretty impressive. The hose that we have here, um, this is your standard kind of 50 foot hose, so 300 feet would be pretty awesome, uh, but it's gonna take a lot longer to clean that. So uh, what we're gonna kind of walk through is pretty much the gun, all the parts, disassembling it, uh, and how to use it, and then the machine itself. So right now, this machine has been cleaned. It is perfectly ready to use. Um, and if I wanted to use the machine um, in, let's say, paint, uh, it would be the same process that I'm going to show you with water so I don't make a mess. So uh, in this bucket I've got about half a pail of water and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the extension cord and I'm going to plug it into the wall. Okay. Uh, a lot of times what you're going to find on some of these bigger sprayers is that on the outside outlets of someone's home it's uh, they're not rated as strong as the inside ones so a lot of times it's easier to, to flip the breaker so if you plug it onto an outside wall and it doesn't work it means they need to check the breaker or it might be uh, more beneficial to just plug it in inside their house um, so we've got this uh, plugged in there's an on off toggle switch right here okay uh, a lot of people don't know that they have a hard time getting the sprayer to work and that's because it's not on okay uh, so what I could do is I could flip it to on and then on the top here, there's a pressure nozzle, okay? And the pressure nozzle will uh, rotate uh, clockwise. Right now it's in the off position. If I was to move it, it's gonna make a noise. Um, it's right here on top. So it's in the off position. Uh, and I, again, if I move it, it's gonna make a noise, okay? So I'm gonna keep it off because I haven't plugged the sprayer into anything or I haven't put the, anything into it. So right here on the sprayer, we have what we call the intake nozzle, intake filter. Um, some people call this a microphone. Uh, I've heard lots of different things. So anyways, this is the part that sucks up the paint. Okay, so if I was to put this into the water like so, it's gonna suck it up and it's gonna go through the pump right here. And then we have this nozzle that will adjust whether or not it's gonna be in spray or prime, okay? So if it's in the forward position, it's in spray. If it's down, it's in the prime position. I'll kind of explain the difference between the two, okay? So when we wanna test a machine to see that it's going to work properly, we need to prime it, which means to get it ready and get it, and get it kind of uh, ready with the new material that we're putting into it. So this extra little hose, and sometimes it's just a little dangly hose, sometimes it's like this, um, this is what we call um, the primer hose, okay? So what, what's gonna happen is if I turn up the pressure while it's in prime, it's going to suck up whatever I've stuck it in. It's gonna go through the pump and it's gonna come right through here, okay? So I can put this into a just empty, dirty bucket if I wanted to, and as I adjust the pressure, it's gonna soak it up, and it's gonna start spitting it out. And then I can turn it down, and I know, okay, it's ready, everything works. If for some reason nothing came out of the primer valve, then I know that there's a blockage or something stuck inside the pump here, okay? So inside. Um, if it wasn't able to suck it up, what I would need to do is I can take a hammer and I can hit this gently because inside of here, there's a ball and a washer. And what happens is a lot of times paint gets stuck in there or the water can actually make it get stuck and the ball just sticks right to the washer. If I hit it with a hammer while it's trying to pump, it can come loose and get rid of that. Um, if it won't work, then you get a wrench, pull this guy off, rinse the ball in the washer and reattach it, okay? So that's the pump. 
if it's not priming, there's an issue with something in the pump, okay? Once we've primed it and we know, okay, that material is great, we let it prime for 15 or 20 seconds, ready to go, we turn down the pressure like I've done, and then I turn the machine to spray. Okay, it doesn't matter which way, forward or back, uh, but once I've turned it to spray, what that means is that now, instead of sucking it up and spitting it out of the primer hose, it's going to suck it up and it's gonna push it into the gun, okay? So if I turn up the pressure, the gun is going to start shaking until it's at the full optimal pressure because it's an airless sprayer. So if I turn it up, it's shaking and shaking and shaking until it stops, okay? Which means now if I was to pull the trigger, it's gonna be a lot of pressure and it's gonna make a mess or I could spray a wall or shoot out the water. Um, so you always wanna make sure that you've turned the pressure down, switched it to prime, or, or switch it to spray, turn the pressure up, and then vice versa. So right now, if I needed to spray, I could point the gun into here, and I could spray out the water, and it will keep kind of refilling it, okay? If I turn the pressure all the way down, I can spray it out until it stops. So now there's nothing left in the hose or in the gun, and this is the only way that you can take the gun apart, okay? Because when it's completely pressurized, everything gets airtight and it's very challenging to pull it apart. So now that there's nothing in here, um, I could technically pull this apart. So if this was paint, I would turn up the pressure, spray it until I cleaned out all the water, saw paint, then I'm ready to go and I can start spraying the house, okay? Now let's talk about the gun itself. So on the gun, we have obviously the handle, we have the trigger right here, okay? There's different types of triggers. Behind the trigger is a lock, so if I was to turn this down, I can't pull the trigger anymore, okay? If I push it up, now I can spray, okay? This is what we call the guard, okay, this, this thick part, and then this is the tip. The tips spray in the arrow direction, okay? They are also reversible. Why they are reversible is so that in case if I'm spraying and I have a fan and it gets clogged, I don't want to take a knife to the inside of that because if I take a knife to the inside of that, I'm going to wreck the tip. So what I do is I turn it the other way, I spray it out, it's unclogged, turn it back and then continue spraying. The way that the guard is facing is the way that the fan is going to go. So this is going to go like this. If I need to go spray vertically, uh, I can turn the tip like so and it'll spray a fan like that. Okay, so these are uh, adjustable. Okay, so you can turn them in either way. Um, when you're completely done spraying, okay, and you want to clean your machine, so I've sprayed a whole house, I'm ready to go, we're all done. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the pressure down, just like I did, spray out all the paint, then I'm going to pull the gun apart and I'm gonna rinse it, okay? So when I'm pulling the gun apart, I'm going to unscrew the guard, okay? And this one obviously has quite a bit of paint on it. So first what I might do is take the tip out, okay? So if I take the tip out, you'll see that there's like a bit of a, a groove and it can only be pulled out when it's like this and I can wiggle it out, okay? So that's the tip. And I can take the guard off by spinning it because what I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna wanna clean inside of this, okay? So this one's dirty. So I'm gonna clean this, I'm gonna rinse this guy off. I'm gonna take maybe the tip and the guard, throw them in some water, rinse them out. Then I'm gonna dismantle the gun, okay? So I'm going to unhook this and spin like so. And inside of here, there's the first filter and we really wanna clean this filter, okay? So we can take that off and there's this filter right here, okay? So we want that to be clean. It's gonna be covered in paint once we paint. So this we would just rinse off, okay? Then now, this is just physically a hose, okay? So if I wanted to rinse out this hose, if I kept the gun attached and I pulled the trigger, what I would find is that while I'm blowing water through, I'm gonna wear out the tip and the guard, okay? And you only get about 100 gallons per tip before it starts to wear away at the shape, and then that's when you want to uh, replace the tip because you're just gonna get more overspray and it's not gonna be as nice. So what I wanna do is I wanna clean this really fast by having it as a hose. So I'm gonna put the hose in the bucket, and if I turn up the pressure, it's gonna just shoot out water, okay? So it's just water. I go, keep going. And I would go until that paint turned into the clear water that I have. Okay, so right now it's just kind of murky water from before, but I would do that until it's fully clean. It takes about, I would say a minute, okay? A minute to two, to two minutes. Then it's ready to go. And then I would reattach uh, the gun because I'd be done. There's also a filter in here, okay? Not every machine has a second filter. Um, most of them do, and most of the bigger, better models do. Um, so we would do the same. We would take this guy out 
and we would make sure that this filter is nice and clean. Okay, so we would dip that in the water, rinse it out, paint might come out of here, which is why I always do this over a tarp. Then when I know that it's ready to go, I put it back in. If this filter is messed up or the one in the gun is messed up, you're gonna want to replace them. They're usually only about 10 to $15, but really important, okay? So again, if I need to prime the machine, I turn the pressure down, I turn it down to prime, turn it up. Again, if the gun is not attached, it's gonna come out of both because it's not sealed, okay? It's not pressurized, so keep an eye on that. Uh, but once it's primed, it's ready to go, then we can swap to the spray. Um, you never want to change the machine from spray to prime when it's fully pressurized, okay? So what happens is if I have the pressure up really high and I'm spraying and all of a sudden it gets clogged, if I turn it down to prime, that's how you can break the, uh, the, the prime valve inside of here, okay? The only reason you would do that is if you had something completely clogged in the gun, okay? So if there's something clogged in there and you cannot clean it out by throwing it down with full pressure, you can actually blow it out, okay? So that's something you could do. So again, if I'm gonna put the gun back together, it's like so. Spin this guy back on. And then we attach my tip. Okay, so the tip goes into the top. On the tips, there's a number here. This one you cannot see probably because it is covered in paint, okay? There's three numbers on there, okay? This one says 517, okay? We've got a whole box of tips right here. Maybe we can read some of them. Okay. Yeah, no. <laughs> we got some red ones. Okay, some great go ones. So here we go. This one says 517, okay? The first number, what that means, you double it, that's how wide the fan is, okay? So if I had to spray a wall, doubling that would give me a 10 inch fan. So if I'm doing a fence, if I'm doing the side of a house, something big, 10 inches is gonna do the job much faster, okay? If I pull out another one, this one is a 215, which means it's a four inch fan. Might be useful if I had to spray baseboards inside, which none of you should be doing, okay? So if I had to do something really small, maybe a railing or like maybe a lattice and I didn't wanna waste a lot of paint, you could use a smaller tip, okay? Smaller the tip, the less overspray because it's not gonna be as wide, but you're gonna go slower. The second two numbers, what those represent is how big the actual hole is, okay? So certain paints need to, they're, 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 uh, they're a certain thickness, so they need to come out of a certain type of tip. So generally for exterior paints, you're gonna use uh, a 15 or a 17, okay? So all of your like WeatherGuard, CoverCoat, Ecologic, Diamond, like all the main exterior paints are gonna be 15 or 17. When you get to an elastomeric paint, so a very thick rubbery paint, that's when you might switch to a 19 or a 21. But generally what you're gonna find is elastomerics can't be sprayed on sprayers like this, okay? They need to be much bigger um, and kind of more that commercial grade, so they can be a lot more expensive, but you do need a bigger tip. It won't fit through these. When you're spraying a lot of ceiling paints, semi-stains, if you're doing them, which I don't recommend, but if you're doing any of these thinner products, that's where you would use maybe a 13 or a smaller tip size, because what happens is those products are very runny. So if you use a smaller tip size, you're not gonna have as much overspray. You're also not going to, when you spray it on, it's not gonna drip or sag. So a lot of times uh, when you're painting, if you're finding that you're spraying it on, um, because these machines are supposed to be, when they are sprayed, at practically full or almost full, okay? So if I adjust the nozzle, I would go to full, and then I might turn it back a bit. A lot of people like to think, oh, I gotta do it at half or, or even less than that, but that's not the truth, okay? Really, you wanna be doing it at the full pressure, and then when you're spraying, which we'll do in another video, uh, you wanna be moving quick enough so that you can put the product on, but what's gonna limit how much uh, goes on and how much it drips is gonna be the tip size, okay? So it's really important that you understand you can't just use one generic tip for everything, okay? If you're pretty much only spraying one product, then yes, you can, but if you do bounce between different types of jobs, um, you're gonna obviously wanna use different tips. Just like I said before too, they do wear out, so you do want to um, you know, get new ones and have fresh ones every kind of 100 to 150 gallons, because what you'll find is instead of it being a thin line that you can control, it's gonna become more of a circle. Okay, and then you're gonna be wasting product, you're gonna have a lot more overspray. Um, so pretty much in a nutshell, that is the machine. You do wanna clean it every time you're done with it. You wanna wrap it, keep it, you know, obviously in clean working order so that all these parts aren't covered in paint so you can actually pull them apart and, and work with them and clean them. Uh, and then when you're done, for the season, in the winter, 
there's a couple different products you can buy like pump armor um, or you could leave um, paint thinner through the hose so that it doesn't freeze for some of you that live in some very cold climates um, or that uh, the ball and everything inside doesn't get stuck okay one thing you also want to do is right here inside the pump which goes up and down um, there's a chemical or a product that you can buy called throat seal and you would just stick it inside of there to lubricate the pistons uh, so that as the pump bumps up and down um, it's going to get rid of any debris or any paint that's going to stick on there okay so really important to keep that kind of clean and, and free of any debris or paint um, but pretty much uh, that is it if uh, we do have a kind of a checklist on what you need to spray a house, what you need to have a sprayer, I usually encourage you to have like a rubber mallet so you can hit this if stuff gets stuck, or a hammer. You're gonna wanna have two um, big wrenches in case you ever have to pull the gun apart or pull the actual pump apart. Um, some of the more expensive machines definitely have the pumps a lot more accessible and a lot uh, easier to replace. Every once in a while, the machine will break, okay? You will have to get the bearings replaced. It's usually anywhere from 200 to 300 bucks. Um, and uh, every once in a while, you will need to get a new hose or a new gun if you keep dropping it. So uh, one thing that happens a lot on these guns is inside of here, there's a spring. And if you keep dropping this, you keep banging this, what's gonna happen is the spring breaks so that when you shoot and let go, it will keep spraying, okay? So if that happens right away, you can sometimes take a wrench to the back of this and undo it so that'll relieve the pressure, but eventually that spring might need to get replaced. So it's really important that you don't drop the gun. Uh, it's important you don't just leave this in water overnight so that it can rust. Um, you know, it's really important to just keep it with you at all times. That's why they have this little belt hook right here uh, so that it can uh, kind of stay on your, your person instead of throwing it onto the ground, so. That's all for today.